Jim here, thanks for joining the channel. I have a really special treat for you today. I have an interview with a military diver. We'll call him Richard. He would like to keep his identity confidential. Richard and I had our first chat. He was telling me a little bit about what it's like to be a military diver. All kinds of stuff going down. You're not gonna wanna miss this. Richard and I might have other conversations in the future, so I'd like to know what questions would you like to ask a military diver, and we'll get to those in future conversations. All right, let's get to it. So, Richard, go ahead. Hey, how you doing? Uh, my name's Richard. Uh, I'm a U.S. Navy diver. I've been a Navy diver for about eight years. Um, recently just went to first class school. I had a good time in Panama City down there. Um, and uh, yeah, I love what, uh, love what you're doing with the channel. Cool. Well, thanks, Richard. So Richard's going to share with us. Uh, I don't know. Actually, we, we didn't uh, discuss this too much. So maybe I'm going to be just as surprised as, as everybody else and, and be just as uh, entertained and educated. So looking forward to this. So what, what is it you want to talk about today, Richard? Well, I'm re a really big fan of your uh, uh, sort of uh, injury or uh, hazard uh, analysis videos. Right. Um, right. I feel like that's a really good, uh, good in-depth analysis on, and it teaches people, right? On, Without on, the pain. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I guess, I mean, my, there, it's not going to be as long as, as your videos, but I mean, uh, mm -hmm. but I do have a, a bunch of them that I can talk okay. about. So the, um, I guess the, the, you want me to just, just jump right in and do it? Yeah, yeah. Let's let's hear. This is a uh, six thing. So th these are things that are are um, I don't know if I can say. So these are navy navy diver incidents. Is that what these are? Like training incidents or something like that? Um, or well, operational, oper op or? operational incidents. Yeah, I would suppose okay. it would be the uh, not 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 nothing too serious. I'm not gonna you know and, and if anybody get hurt, I'm not gonna actually talk about it. But gotcha. you know, at the end of it, I'm gonna. Talk about the ones where the guy showed up at the keg party that night. You know what I mean? <laughs> okay, sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah, yeah. All right, mate. Let's hear it. Um, so we were diving in um, quite cold water. It was up north, um, and we had an officer that wanted to get in. It was like one of our first days up there, um, and that's always a bad op. That's always a bad operation when an officer wants to get in because uh, serious. They because yeah, they don't they don't dive. <laughs> I mean, oh, man. Okay. <laughs> they're, uh, they're mostly sitting, sitting in the office, you know what I mean? So it's, right. it's one of those situations where it's just like, I, I mean, I can't tell them no, you know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That sounds like me a little bit. So you, it was dry suits or. Uh, no wetsuits. What seven. Months. Okay. But it was, it was pretty cold. It's quite cold. It was quite hot out that day. I think it was in, uh -huh. I mean, uh, relatively hot, but it was like 85 and then the water temperature was probably in the forties, I would say. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gotcha. Um, so this is at the end of the day. I mean, it's like five o'clock. We're all ready to get, roll out and grab a beer. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, he, he jumps in the water. Everything is going fine. He gets to about 15 feet. Um, and he just starts, we have a uh, comms, right? We, so we can talk to each other. Full face. Um, uh, yeah. Full face mask. Um, uh -huh. and he just starts hacking up a lung. And he, we're just, we keep asking him, Hey, are you okay? Are you okay? He's like, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. And, you know, eventually after like five minutes, we're like, all right, just calm down, you know, just controlled ascent, make your way up. Yeah. You know, we got to figure out what's and going you're on right here. There with him, right? is, yeah. Yeah. I'm right there with him. Yeah. 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 I'm like, I'm like holding him the entire time. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. you know, nothing too panicky or anything like that. It was just mm -hmm. like, it was weird. It was just something right. was really, really weird was going on. Right. Um, do, do you know where I'm going with this? Cause this is a rare, rare disorder. But it's not the chokes from DC. No, 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 okay. no. We're only, at, we're only at 15 feet, you know? Hmm. Um, so may, maybe you haven't even heard of this cause it's so rare, hmm. but he, we, he gets up. And he actually starts spitting up like a little bit of blood, like there's blood in his lungs. Yeah. So he's like hacking up there. He's hacking up like brown, you know, reddish brown mm. stuff. Mm. He's doing fine. I mean, he's breathing. Mm. You know what I mean? He's he, mm. he's uh, not panicking or anything like that. So we're not too worried about it. We take him to the hospital. Yeah. Um, and we're all we're all in our 
just getting in our books. You know what I mean? Like, we're like, mm. what is this? Yeah. Because I, we haven't seen it before. Right. Um, and it turns out, do, do you know what it is? No. Um, immersion pulmonary edema. So he jumped in. It's like 85 degrees out. He, when oh. he jumped in the water, all of the blood from his extremities went to his core mm. and it filled, filled his lungs with uh, blood. Hmm. Would never have guessed that. Right. Me. Yeah. <laughs> so, so it didn't have as much to do with the depth as it did with the temperature difference. Yep. It was all temperature. He could have been, he could have just jumped in the water and not even had any scuba gear on or anything oh, like that. Grief. Yeah. yeah, yeah I've scared. never heard of anything like that. I mean, everything, everything worked out fine. You know, we just, yeah. he's, we put him on oxygen, took him to the hospital. Um, and, you know, he was out at the bar with us that night, but, you know, it was just one of those, one of those scary things, you know? Hell yeah. <laughs> oh so weird. It's so weird. Yeah. You know, I, I, um, I had a few run-ins with that sort of thing at altitude. Like when I was in the Himalayas, uh, people would get that, um, have to take an emergency trip down. But, uh, wow, that sounds really acute. I've never, that must've been intense me. Because I would have thought the worst thing. I would have thought this guy's lungs blew up. You know, was what I would. Right. All I would have thought. I. Uh, it wasn't. It wasn't all that dramatic. I mean, he. We did a full uh, neurological examination on him. Obviously, um, you got him on O2. But he was. He was breathing. You know, he was doing fine. He just. Right. It just like every like three seconds, he would just be spitting up blood. Wow. Can you say really what, what was the original uh, objective of that dive? Can you say, or was there? Yeah. 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 That's no problem. We were actually, um, it was in the Pacific Northwest. Um, it was around, uh, Friday Harbor, which is just around the, uh, Canadian border. We were just doing an army Corps of engineer job uh, over there. We were just measuring the anchor chain on uh, and just, uh, checking out if that had uh, deteriorated uh, okay. at all for this, for this, for this Harbor. Okay. Let, let me ask you if, if you can say, so I'm, I'm kind of curious you now. So I'm, I don't technical dive much anymore. Right. I mean, I was a technical instructor and I used to do a, a fair number of technical dives and, and I know what technical dive planning, right. Technical dive planning for me, you know, in the beginning, it's almost kind of boring, right. Because actually every minute of that dive, essentially I know what depth I'm going to be at and how long I'm going to be there and, pretty much what I'm doing. So, uh, so is, is military diving kind of more like that? I mean, as opposed to recreational where you say, Hey, we, you know, we're just going to go down to 30 feet and swim around until such and such a limit. And there's much more freedom. What are the, what's the planning with the, the military dives like? Uh, no, I just, every, every second is, is planned out. You know what I mean? It's, it's more like that, but it's not necessarily about the depth or anything like that it's mostly about the task that you're trying to do mm -hmm. um so you re that's that's really what you need to rehearse the most um okay. to make sure that you're efficient uh when you're doing it because you know at 250 feet you don't have much time before your your <laughs> your decompression profile starts getting pretty long and nobody yeah. wants to hang out there longer than they have to so yeah <laughs> um, so would these be mixed mixed gas dives and stuff yeah yeah mixed mixed gas for sure. Mixed gotcha. gas stage diving or, um, or a closed circuit rebreather. Have you, pardon me, have you ever used a rebreather? Yep. Yep. Oh, what do you, what do you, yeah, I never have. Well, I'm, you know what? Actually, I was on a rebreather for, during an instructor's course, you know, just like a trial dive in the pool kind of thing. I, I had always dreamed about getting one. What do you think? Well, we use one that's from like the seventies. Uh, so it's, very the it's like electronics from the 70s right right very unreliable to tell you the truth oh, right. uh, really old they're thinking about phasing them out right now um oh, but honestly it brand? i think it's made by jurgensen marine or jordan oh, marine or oh like they're very famous yeah um yeah uh but yeah it's it, it was made in like the 70s and we still use it uh but honestly, as far as the capabilities go, there's no other rig that you can just set up in an hour and dive to 300 feet. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what, mate? I, I mean, you know, I, I was a wannabe uh, rebreather dive. You know, I was on the rebreather boards. I really, I was saving up, you know, I had a little rebreather fund that that's what I wanted to do. And, you know, and back then, um, sometimes the old tech is, you know, 
kind of good, right? Because a rebreather is just looking to kill you a, a few different ways, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, isn't it? No, you're not kidding. Yeah, it sure <laughs> is. Yeah, I've definitely had some hairy dives with those things. It's every time I I dive one, it's probably like 50 50 where I'm like, all right, I'm I'm <laughs> I'm canking this one because <laughs> this thing is not telling me what it needs to or you know it's not looking good yeah yeah i mean you know i was i was waiting you know back then when i was kind of in the hunt i was thinking that gosh you know i'm really hoping they're going to come out with a co like reliable co2 sensing for in the loop um sure. because you know one of the one of the things that kills a lot of folks and i don't know if you know, i'm out of that game anymore so i don't know if they came up with something for that or not and was yeah. it was it triple redundant you had like 302 sensors or something like that is that how it was yeah there's there's 302 sensors on it yeah yeah cool all right all right man so so wh- wh- i don't know what, what kind of underwater skills you have you, you do welding or what what do you do it's uh basically broken up in our we have our three pillars um we have underwater ships husbandry. So you're working on ships, you're doing, you know, underwater repairs, uh, maintenance, that kind of thing. That's people say that that's, that's our hardest, uh, command to go to. And I, I would agree. Um, oh. because you're, you're, you're really, you're waking up at 6am and you're getting in a wetsuit and you're getting in the water and you're going to be in the water for the six plus day. hours. Yeah. Probably oh, six plus hours. I would say, uh, um, and then you got uh, your uh, Mudsu, which is your mobile d- diving and salvage uh, companies. Um, so you're you're doing underwater salvage, your deep dives, right? Your hard hat, um, that kind of oh, stuff. Oh man, you've Cut- done that? Yeah, that's that's actually where I'm at now. You know, that's your underwater cutting, welding, demolition, um, all that kind of stuff. Mm. Uh, all kind of tied into one. Mm. And then you you have your 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 sort of spec war, your, your special warfare. So EOD seals, that kind of stuff. That's, those are our three main commands that we can go to. Gotcha. Let, let me ask you. So I think this is on this topic. So um, why is it, my impression is that those uh, six meter um, pure oxygen, those very simple rebreathers, those chest mounts are still seem to be relatively popular in the military. Why? What is it about six meters or less? I mean, is there a lot that you could do at that depth? Because uh, it seems very limiting from my perspective, but I, I see that there are a lot of these shallow water rebreathers out there. Do you have any idea? Or? Uh, I mean, I do. I don't know if I can talk about it. I, I mm. probably can. It's mostly for um, re- reconnaissance, right? Or beach landings. You know what I mean? Uh, they're, they're not, they're not going deep off. for those things. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Gotcha. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, I've always wondered because on those rebreather forums, there's all these guys, you know, tinkering around with these six meter rebreathers, you know, because they're simple, right? So it's just... they're nice. I like those a lot. I mean, they're simple. They're lightweight. Um, yeah. I mean, obviously, you're, you're, the, the capabilities of them is a little bit limited, but um, right. they're they're not. They're definitely nice. You you want to talk about some more incidents or we were doing uh, we were in Cartagena, um, and mm. we had uh, I was I wasn't there. Uh, I had just shown up and we uh, get a call uh, that a guy had, has lost all sensation in one of his feet. Um, oh, and we get him back. Upon we, surfacing. Uh, it was yeah. definitely a couple hours later. So it, we're, we're talking, window, we're talking about some, some, some DCS for sure. Right. Um, we get him in the chamber. We get him on, uh, we get him to 60 feet. Uh, get him on O2. It had been at this point, I think probably 36 hours before his symptom uh, had initially uh, manifested. So I think by this time where everybody was really thinking that the nerve damage had really already set in, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. We're doing a probably six hour treatment on this guy. Um, Were there like tables, like table sixes? Sure. Table fours yeah. It was, like it, was, it was, it was, it was a six. It was a gotcha. treatment table six. I, I didn't know you actually knew about any other treatment tables. <laughs> I've been actually I've been in the chamber made a number of times, but that's another story. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Wake up the next morning, probably eight hours later, and we do another one on him. Um, and he I'm I'm in there with him and he starts saying, um, Hey, are they like running something outside right now? Like is there 
like machinery going on outside and i'm like rip the o2 off of them <laughs> you know what i mean and uh luckily you know he was like all right yeah a couple minutes later it went away um what was he having o2 it was about the cns or yeah yeah he, he had definitely had like some sort of cns hit we put him back on o2 couple <laughs> couple like 15 minutes later same thing <laughs> Serious. rip them off o2 <laughs> um so i mean it's one of those things that you got to, like so you were in there with him and probably he was wearing the o2 mask and you weren't right is that what uh, yeah, going that's on? yeah we were at 60 feet I, he, he was wearing the o2 mask i was not yep yeah um, and what was it part, pardon me because you know people are going to watch this so and, and i i don't recall the difference between a table four and a table six is a table six the one where it's a long one's like four hours long or is treatment how... table six uh it's i think it's about six hours i think oh yeah yeah okay yeah all right <laughs> okay it's yeah. like six it's hours like... it's like six hours and 30 minutes or something like that right but that's one of those things that i was i saw had saw in your video was talking about like when you like, am I, am I messed up right now? Am I not? You know what I mean? Mm. Is, am I, mm. is my foot just cold? Mm. Like you, you need to bring that, that up to other people <laughs> like immediately. Yeah. Well, that was, uh, you know, my, my one video was talking about how good, um, Dan USA is, you know, those, those docs on the phone, man, they are top notch. Yeah. Those, uh, and just looking on the forums of Dan is like super helpful um yeah. for for just things like this right just talking about yeah yeah particular incidents um yeah. like anecdotal stuff uh yeah always always good to hop on there and just and just look just have oh, a look. Man, isn't it back in the day i was a, a moderator on scuba board so i spent a fair bit of time on there and you know my my overwhelming recollection was there would always be like seemed like at least once a month and, and more during the season you know be someone come on and say hey two days ago, this happened to me and I'm feeling like this. What do you think? Everyone's like, why aren't you calling Dan already? You know, get on the phone, you know, get the process started. You know, it was always very often it was someone like after a day or two, you know, of symptoms, you know, getting on the forum. Sometimes you can just be like, uh, yeah, I think my toe is a little bit numb compared to I can't feel my legs. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Me. You know, and I don't know if uh, I, I honestly can't remember if I had put this um, in there or not. But I, I when you're mentioning about the, the numb foot or leg, it was making me laugh because that's what happened to me. And uh, and as it turned out, it, it was my neck. I think I yeah, saw that. Video. It's, it would, yeah. it's not nothing diving related, right? At all. Yeah. Got spinal degeneration. Although, although you could argue it is, uh, and I'm going to make a video about this someday. It is diving related because, you know, these days... For me to maintain um, a nice uh, trim in the water, it, it's it's really stressful on my neck, and it causes now all kinds of numbness all over my body. I'm getting old, man. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's, uh, that's crazy. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Yeah. So when you guys do uh, chamber work, so probably you've got what a hyperbarist on hand or something like that, always on call. No, nope, it's just us. Serious? Yep. It's just us. Is that That's all legit? Got. That's Holy legit, cow, man. man. Holy cow. We do, have a, we do have a diving medical officer that we can call, um, right? But <clears throat> for the most part, as far as physically being there, it's just us. We're running the chamber. We're doing it all. So how big How big was that chamber? That chamber was quite big. Um, uh, I don't know how many cubic feet it is, but you could yeah. almost, you, it would probably about like shoulder height. I would say you couldn't stand up all the way, but you could almost get there. How how many people could that thing accommodate? Um, I mean, we have different ones, but that one could probably accommodate um, two or three patients, I think. Yeah, the biggest one I was in here was kind of like a little uh, camper van kind of thing. I mean, there were four people, biggest, either four people in there on lawn chairs with masks on. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've heard about things like things like that uh, before. And it seems a little bit sketchy to me. How, how fast can you press those things? Can they like send it down all the way or, or are you just going at like two or three feet a minute? Because I've heard most of the time when you go to those things, it's just like, you're just waiting there to get to 60 feet or wherever you're going. <laughs> yeah. It, well, 
it was a really unsatisfying process because what, what I've heard, <laughs> um, yeah, like like when I read the forums uh, in the States, people who've done hyperbaric treatment, it feels like in the States, well, first of all, these chambers are open all the time. And second of all, they're not that busy. And third of all, the, the docs seem to be very much you know, you've got one patient and, you know, we can run the tables as they're going to suit you. It's like, oh, okay, well, you still have a little bit more symptoms. All right, well, you know, let's run another table this or table that. Whereas in my case, oh yeah, you're coming once in a week, no matter what your symptoms are, how severe or whatever. Oh, you still feel bad. Okay. Next Tuesday, <laughs> you know, so yeah. it was pretty unsatisfying. I'd be yeah. a little bit frustrated, honestly. You know, if you're, if you're a person who's traveled around the world, there's nothing worse than uh, being not in your country and being sick, right? I mean, that's yeah. when, you know, there's a language barrier and a cultural barrier. It's a bad situation. Do you speak Japanese? Just you to... would think, but not so good. <laughs> 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 it's the one thing I could do to really improve my quality of life here. And I got to say, I, my, my skills are, are, are limited to be kind to myself. So tell me some diving. What do you call that? It's not, you don't call it a diving bell, do you? What do you call that? Uh, the helmet? What do you call that? Oh, it's a helmet. What, a diving helmet. What do you, so what's, what's that like? If you're claustrophobic, yeah, don't sign up for this uh, for sure. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Cause that mm -hmm. wearing that entirely capsulating thing, covering your head, it can be, can be definitely claustrophobic. Right. Um, but it, other than that, I mean, You've got a little uh, a nose block where you can just you press it forward and it covers uh -huh. covers your the, your two you can cover covers your two nostrils so you can okay. clear right. And how does that? I've always wondered how how hard is that to get used to? It's not that bad. No, it's, because it's, it's really not that mask, bad. It must be the similar, right? Yeah, it's pretty similar to that. It just covers your nostrils. Yeah. All right, so you're just pushing it uh, hard enough. It's going to seal off your nostrils, and you'll be able to bounce yeah, out. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, All right. But the field of view is the only problem that I have with the, the helmet it's because the field of view is quite narrow um, mm -hmm. and it does fog up a lot. Although most of the time we're working in two to three foot biz anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Oh, <laughs> Pardon me. What would be the, the reason uh, that you would use that over open circuit? Is it longevity or what's the... the volume of gas that you're okay. that you've got right so i mean you can use surface apply unlimited <laughs> it's basically unlimited and we're right. not uh sometimes we're not working you know very deep anyway so it doesn't really matter um uh, and it's uh so. what is it it's just like a gas pump a gasoline uh it's a bank of air oh so it's just like a, a bunch of big tanks on the surface that get pumped down to you essentially gotcha so there's not any chance of any gas contamination with exhaust or something like that or an engine going going on the blink or something like that it's a very uh secure system yeah i mean that's pretty much it you can tape a bunch of accessories to it you got cameras lights um mm. video uh like that you can you know press record if somebody wants to see what's going on uh -huh. um, and uh so the weight of, of the helmet, you've got like what? It's like a shoulder system, maybe. So it's kind of comfortable or like shoulder pads. Is that how that works? It, you got a neck dam that just sits. You just pull it over your head, sits on your neck. And then you uh -huh. just put the hat straight on over top of that. That's, okay. That's all you gotta do. <laughs> well, so your neck your neck is like, well, you're underwater. So it's buoyant. All right. So it's not going to feel heavy and like it would be on, on the surface. It, on the surface, it, if you're wearing it for like 15 plus minutes, it yeah. it sucks. <laughs> gotcha. Once it gets underwater, you're you're totally fine. Gotcha. All right. Do you ever have any exciting wildlife encounters uh, while you're working on something under there? Yeah, I guess I could talk about one. Um, we were doing some fairly deep dives. I mean, I think I was at like 160 or something like that, and I had we're doing like piling inspections or something. Mm. Um, I had put my hand up against what I thought was a piling, and yeah. uh went away you know did something did something else was talking to top side or something like that put my hand back there and it wasn't there and i was yeah. just freaked out <laughs> especially because i was narked out at the time i don't know what it was <laughs> oh gosh oh man <laughs> I, I have no idea what it was i i was narked out and i was like i am freaking out right now <laughs> oh that's creepy huh that is creepy. And it was yeah, all yeah. dark, of course, right? 160. It's pitch black. It's, I couldn't yeah. see anything. Mm. It like, I mean, and the visibility itself was terrible. It was probably like two feet to start out with. So it was just oh, pitch man. black. You couldn't see your hand in front of your face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I, I almost I almost had a, a, a giant manatee blow through me uh, on a night dive once and I that freaked me out because I, I looked and I just saw a moving wall and I didn't know what it was and then I figured that was a manatee but I would have freaked if that would have plowed into me at night <laughs> oh yeah manatees are like scary I think manatees are kind of scary I don't know I don't know what it is about them they that kind of freak me out a little bit or- size wise and like just like the look of them i mean i mean people thought oh, yeah, they yeah, were like kind of just yeah they're like mermaids yeah. except they're just ugly as sin true true <laughs> you guys getting any good uh, uh bioluminescence over there or no heck yeah yeah you got some good stories you know when you're working on a inside of a ship and uh it's yeah. pitch black and you can't see anything and you just wave your hand around and you're like, yeah. oh, I got some light now. <laughs> yeah. 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 Here's a question that I, that I have that came up in a forum recently. Um, so, well, I think at first it came up with, uh, ah, with uh, sperm whales. So this guy was claiming that uh, the, what do you call it? The sonar ping from, from a, a sperm whale made his, his hand go, go numb and then it got off on a discussion about how damaging would a submarine ping be for divers who were close to that like because it's supposedly like 230 or 250 decibels or something i mean it would most people are saying you know i could kill a human being i mean what is there any is there any folklore or or out there about you know how how bad it would be to to be near a, a submarine that was pinging if you're underwater uh, I think it would probably blow your eardrums out. Right. I don't, I don't know if I have any. <clears throat> there's definitely no firsthand accounts of that actually happening. Um, there's only mm. there's only just like, what do you think would happen? <laughs> that kind of that kind of conversation within our community. But uh, right. my opinion, my opinion is that it would definitely blow your eardrums out. Um, yeah. And you might have um, some sort of, you know, internal bleeding depending on how close you were to it because it's it's right. basically a sh- it's basically a shockwave going through the water well of course yeah. like a small explosion right i guess yeah if you hear sonar going on uh one yeah. thing is probably just the start of it too because they're they're going to continuously be pinging so if you ever got hear it. sonar in the water uh just get out <laughs> got it okay you know i mean it, it actually you know kind of it kind of freaked me out just once i was uh, at a very common dive spot here and the water is very very deep there right so as you know one, one of maybe you know like one of the interesting things about japan is it, it gets deep really quickly mm-hmm. off most of the shores here and there is yep. a spot where uh between the dive site and numas or the nearest city it's like a kilometer deep there and i was just entering in the water and i looked over and like i don't know 500 meters away there was a submarine going like going down and i was like i started to freak a little bit because i started thinking well what happens you know if this thing starts doing you know pinging down there i was but i said you know he has to know because a very famous dive site he has to know we're all here i'm going to guess that he's not going to be uh, you know doing doing silly things but but i was kind of you know it was, it was playing with my head a little bit Oh, that would have freaked me out. I would have been out. Of, <laughs> I would have been out for, for sure. Because <laughs> I know that this, the, those submarines are those submarines are run by a bunch of eighteen year old kids. You know what I mean? Like, so <laughs> I, yeah. I know the people that are on those things, and they're eighteen year old right. kids that are that have access to nuclear reactors. <laughs> oh, good grief! Yeah, so. yeah. So yeah, I didn't. Yeah, yeah, I didn't. I didn't hear anything. I didn't have any choice. I was probably leading the dive or something. So. Yeah. How about the whole, um, what do they say? The reputation of bend and mend for Navy divers. Is there any truth to that? Bend and mend, uh, maybe in the eighties. Uh, not anymore though. <laughs> oh, perfect. Yeah. I would, I would. Have <laughs> Although, I, would I mean, people, pe- people do get, people do get messed up though. I mean, it, it does happen. Um, but you know, we'll, we'll put them, we'll put them in 60 feet. No problem. But I think back, back then there was more like more of a cowboy mentality. Um, now yes. it's, it's very, it's very book oriented. So what, what kinds of things would lead to people getting bent? So for, for example, I would guess that with recreational divers, a lot of times I think it's a lifestyle thing, a lack of hydration or alcohol maybe, or I mean, people might disagree with me on that, but what, what would be the kinds of categories of, of causation for uh, Navy divers getting bent? Uh, well, I mean, it, for lack of a better term, I think, uh, fat people <laughs> honestly because uh fat 
uh, absorbs five times more nitrogen or an inert gas than, uh, than muscle does. So if you got a lot of fat on you, um, it also, um, off gases it on gas is slower, but it also off gas is slower. Right. Um, yeah. so that, that, that is, I think is the main attributing factor to, to DCS in gotcha. my opinion. I don't, I'm not a, do- yeah. I'm not a doctor. I'm not yeah. a doctor. I just know I've read a couple books though. So that's, it's the only yeah. thing that I can tell you. And, and may, I, I, I feel your, your sensitivity to this because it, it's, it's not a very, it's a politically sensitive thing to talk about these days. Right. So this one technical dive buddy of mine, he actually got bent twice when we dove together and we did same gases, same profiles, everything, you know, minute by minute, depth by depth. And both times uh, he got bent and, uh, you know, then later, you know, he was quite a bit heavier than me and, and he went on a pretty strict diet after that. And he never had issues after that. He went on to be a rebreather diver, you know, yeah, he figured that, that body fat had something to do with it as well. Yeah. That's basically the main attributing factor. And that's, I mean, we got, you know, physical standards in the Navy for a reason, especially Navy divers, you know. So are there like body fat, uh, standards or, um, there is Navy wide, uh, but there's, there's no, um, higher standard for Navy divers than there are for anybody else, but there is, um, a higher, uh, physical standard. Nice. Yeah. What's it's your favorite cool. dive movie? Dive movie. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a documentary. It, it's called the uh, last breath. Oh, uh, check what's it out. That one about? Uh, it's a, it's a documentary. It's about a sat diver that uh, got his umbilical cut when he was uh, working his, yeah, his airline air hose got his, he got that cut and it's just about the rescue process of mm. getting him back to, to uh, salvation, I guess. <laughs> okay. I will check that out, mate. Last breath. Thanks. How about, what did yeah. you think of the one, uh, the one with, I forget. I forget the name, but it was with, with Robert De Niro and that, uh, Oh, men, men of honor. Yeah. what did you think? Golly. <laughs> it's uh, something else. Cringe? I think that cringe? movie, yeah, it's a little bit cringe, but I think, mm, Oh, there's a lot of movies from that era that are kind of, kind of the same. You know what I mean? But no, any, no. I mean, would they make someone walk on land with one of those things as a test of fitness or what, what was that? Well, oh, because that, think- that guy, the guy's story is actually true, isn't it? There really was a diver who lost his part of his leg, right? Yeah, yeah. Carl Bashir was a master diver who did oh. lose his leg. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. Um, so, so what about the fitness then? Would they make someone walk on land for something like that? I, I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> it's possible, right. but in a courtroom, right. I don't know. <laughs> I don't yeah, think yeah, so. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's good for the movie, right? Is there any association with any particular dive agencies with uh, the military training? How does that work? Uh, ADCI is a uh, accredited divers international. I, I can't remember I what it stands for anymore. I never heard of that. Uh, is that like more commercial in, in, uh, hold on. ADCI. I gotta look it up. <laughs> I haven't heard of that. Association of diving contractors international. Oh, okay. That's what it is. So that, that is like more commercial. Yeah. So we, like. that, you can get, you can get, uh, um, commercial those certifications through the navy um just by going but just by being a navy diver actually and so and so navy divers so when they if someone comes into the navy and what they want to be a diver they try out to be a diver they apply to be a diver or they're selected to be a diver how does that work uh well i mean i guess i could just tell you my story about uh, becoming one i mean i was yeah. 17 years old and I had just moved to a new state. It wasn't making enough money anywhere. Didn't really want to go to school. Uh, was pretty much working a dead end job. My dad was in the Navy. So I was like, well, you know, he, he's in the Navy. He just has a bunch of stories about him just getting wasted all the time. It sounds like a pretty good time. <laughs> Tra- traveling the world, right? Traveling the world, you know, getting just getting hammered. So that sounds like a good time for me. Um, applied. Um, did the whole uh, ASVAB, which is like the test that you got to take. I did fairly well on it. They were like, all right, here's the jobs that you can take. And I was like, these sound terrible. Like, I don't want to do any of these things right now. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're they're talking about, you know, like IETs, like, which is just like a computer technician. You know oh, what I mean? Like a bunch great, of computer stuff, stuff. where you're just sitting at a desk. And right. I get like, yeah, brainy stuff. And I was like, I, 
I get like anxiety if I sit on a desk for longer than 30 seconds, you know? <laughs> um, and, uh, and they were like, well, you could do that or, or you could do, they, had, they, they showed me this other list, which was seal EOD SWIC or diver. <laughs> Holy cow. And I was like, well, cool. my dad always talks about, my dad always talks about this Navy diver that he knew. And he said he was the wildest man he's ever met in his life. And he was like one of his best friends and all around stand up guy. And I'm like, wow. Hey dad, can you like reach out to this guy and, and see if he'll like, give me some like promotional material <laughs> pretty mm. much about like, mm. why should, why should I be, you know, why should I do that? And yeah. he did surprisingly enough. I don't know why he did that. Uh, <sighs> jokes on him really. <laughs> 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 um, so I ended up picking that, you know, you go to boot camp and then you're segregated into a different division um, if you join one of those programs. So you're in, you're in a boot camp, EOD techs, wannabe divers, that kind of thing. What's the training like? Is it really and hard, hardcore or what? It's pretty hardcore. I'm not going to lie. It's it, yeah. it. People tell you that it's like, oh, I was, I was no problem. It was easy. Like, I didn't think it was very easy. Like difficult how? Like, well, like, we, like okay, let me give you some examples. So like some of the tech training I've taken, um, you know, I've been, like uncomfortable, like with water in your system, or, you know, I, I, like I'm feeling like I'm going to drown or, you know, low on breath because of the kind of exercise I'm doing, but, or is it, or is it, you know, uh, mentally demanding? What, what's the, what's the difficulty of it? Well, it's, it's, it's everything. So it's, you wake up at 4 a.m. Yeah. It, and you're not going to be done until, you know, 9 p.m. some days, you know what I mean? So, and you're, you're underwater being skill loaded, task loaded. It's, uh, channeled uh yeah yeah it's it's very stressful um and yeah uh, you i mean when you wake up you're you're doing a probably two or three hour workout and then you're going to class for the rest of the day and then at three or four o'clock you're going to work out again so it's 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 mentally tough it's physically tough the tests are i i didn't think that they were that difficult but hmm. some people did have some difficulty with them i mean i mean it's really i think it's fairly basic stuff you know what i mean it's not I didn't think it was, it was that in depth. There's something that's called pool week. Uh, once you actually get to dive school um, and it's a week of um, basically them, the instructors just taking away your air. And then oh my gosh. I'm, I might not be able to, I might not be able to say it, but they basically pop your regulator out of your mouth and then yeah. they just beat the crap out of you. <laughs> right 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 you know what i, I don't, I don't know if you guys ever have any it, trying to see how indestructible yeah. <laughs> you are so did a lot of people panic underwater or what by this point that's their goal by this point um i'm pretty much yeah it, it's to weed out people that are going to panic so yeah. if they see that you're uncomfortable um or you know uh, even just doing like a underwater breath hold something like that and you're not making yeah. it like yeah they're going to pick on you. You know what I mean? Right. They're not going to make yeah. you, they're not going to tell, t- you're not going to tell you you failed. However, they'll just pick on you until you do fail. Holy That's pretty God. much what, what they do. So, you know, I, I, this is something, well, I don't know if you, you know, you said you like um, these, you know, accident analyses and actually the one that I just posted up yesterday, there's been a lot of interesting discussion. I don't know if you saw it. So that woman, she panicked at 15 meters and she spit her rag and ripped her mask off and just like bolted for the surface. And, you know, you know, for, for, for a scuba diver, you know, just to think, you know, the, the state of mind that you'd have to be in to actually, she wasn't out of air. You know, there was plenty of air in the rag. It was just, you know, felt the compulsion to spit the rag and throw the mask off, you know, just the state of mind you'd have to be in to, to think, you know, you're not thinking, but you know, to feel that that's the best recourse, man. It, it's, it's got to be a dark place to be. Oh yeah, I can't even imagine what was going on in her head to to be able to do that. Because yeah. it just doesn't even it wouldn't cross yeah. my mind at all. Like, but you know what, me? You know what? You're gonna you're gonna freak. I was I was actually talking with someone this week because I was talking about that event, saying, yeah, I can't imagine like how someone would do that. And this person told me they've had that that impulse before. It was a diver really? that I know. Yeah. And, uh, you know, this, you know, diver has had some issues in the past and, you know, the person said, you know what, I know exactly what that person was. Cause I, I felt that, you know, I felt that, you know, yeah. I mean, I just wanted to get the reg out of my mouth because I knew there was better air at the surface and it didn't make sense 
but that was just the impulse I was going through. And I was like, holy cow, man. Yeah, that is, that's wild. And, and I mean, you know, I, I, you know, I'm sure, you know, you've, you've been around your, your share of panic divers and maybe, maybe even I've been around more because they're, they're less highly trained, but um, yeah, I am very, very interested in the mechanism and the mechanics of panic because yeah, it's very real. Right. Yeah. That's definitely the, well, I mean, that's the number one killer, right. And that's what we get taught from day one is panic is, is the, the number one killer of divers. <laughs> Mm. people who panic yeah i think just to put it put it all in perspective is uh mm. we went from we started with 41 and i think we ended up with 12 mm. so and that what was, was a period of time five months oh wow that's oh that's intense man and you learned like uh skills also like welding underneath underwater and stuff or that all comes later uh, they, you learn how to not kill yourself when you're welding underwater, but the actual skill of underwater welding probably comes a little bit later. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I would figure. Okay. Gotcha. So do you think you're going to go on to commercial diving someday? Is that, is that a, an ambition? Is that a good, yeah, is that a good yeah. career? Is that a good career? I don't do think so. That? I would, oh. I would not recommend that. <laughs> oh, okay. No, gotcha. <laughs> I actually right. wouldn't. It's for, right. it's if you, if you've got a right mindset and everything like that, it, you're it's a good career but it's got yeah any any last thoughts you want to wrap up with or any final sentiments you have um i mean no i really appreciate your channel uh really good i think you're about probably about to blow up here pretty soon to so just keep doing what you're doing you really think so <laughs> yeah oh man no you're putting in the effort you're putting in the effort oh, and man, I'm you, trying. you've got you've got the good backgrounds <laughs> Richard, thanks so much for coming on the channel and sharing your knowledge and your experience. I'm sure everybody uh, really enjoyed that and learned a lot, myself included. Also, I, I and I'm sure everyone watching would like to thank you for your service. In the comments, post up any questions you might have for Richard for this or for a future video. And of course, as always, hit the like if you got something out of it. And if you think this channel is something you'd like to watch in the future, go ahead and subscribe. Thank you all, and I'll see you on the beach.